I'm going to go through and explain the requirements, what this project is actually going to look like, and then we're going to actually do a couple of practices in which you are able to identify what my expectations are and what would suffice for a proper healthy eating project eat day by day. All right, so let's look really quickly. So just as a review, as we've talked about in class, this is going to be a five-day project. Two of those days are going to be weekend days, and then three of those days are going to be weekday days, just simply because your habits change based on whether or not you're going to school, all right? And you're going to have to accomplish the following, all right? So first, you're, you need to keep neat records of everything that you eat for five days. That does not include water, diet soda, tea, or coffee. The reason being those don't provide us with any nutritional um, macromolecules, do, doesn't provide us with any calories. I do need to really quickly note, however, I have a different definition of coffee than a lot of students. Um, coffee for me is if you go to Starbucks, you order a coffee, that is coffee. You can add a splash of milk, that's totally fine, but coffee is not a frappuccino, coffee is not a latte. If you get a frappuccino or a latte, you'll need to categorize that under the proper macronutrient slash food group that we're going to be talking about. Secondly, you need to record each food or drink that you consume under the meal during which you ate it. Okay, Then you're going to highlight it in order to identify what food group it comes from. And then if it comes from a problem area, which I'll talk about in a little bit, then you need to record it under that problem area. So for example, just as a note, if, you're, if you eat potato chips, those would not be categorized as any sort of carbohydrate, etc. It's not a whole grain, um, and that's because it provides no nutritional value. Okay? So instead of putting it under one of the food groups, which we'll look at in just one second, you would write potato chips under the problem areas of high fat and high salt. Okay? So one food can be in multiple problem areas. Do not put potato chips under a vegetable. Don't put it under your grain section. It, it, it isn't. Um, number three, be certain you are consuming and recording at least one food that it's, is an excellent source of calcium, vitamin A, vitamin C, and iron. Now, especially for calcium and iron, sometimes it can be hard to find especially calcium if you do not consume dairy. In this case, I'm fine with your food being fortified with calcium. So for example, if you drink soy milk, it's fortified with calcium. A lot of other foods, processed foods that you might consume can also be fortified with calcium. So just look at labels. But you need to be finding sources of calcium if you do not consume dairy. For number four, be certain that when you eat foods from the problem areas, so high fat, high sugar, or high salt, that you eat in moderation. Okay? This project is not telling you not to have a dessert. However, you're only allowed to have two servings of each of those problem areas. All right, so for example, if you have a donut in the morning, that comes from the high fat and high sugar section. So you can only have two sources of high fat, high sugar, and high salt in a day. So by eating that donut, you are consciously making the decision, this is gonna count as one of my high fat and high sugar cheats. I say cheats, but you know, you can have a donut, that's fine, but do decide whether or not it's worth it. Is it worth using up one of your two high fat, high sugars. If it is, go for it, all right? Five, plan the meals for these five days with your parents, all right? Make sure that you have the necessary ingredients purchased ahead of time. That is to say, do not, and I repeat, do not send your parents to the grocery store to do your shopping. You need to go with them or you need to do it yourself, okay? And just as a note, your parents, for some of the assignments that you're going to be given starting next class, your parents are going to be involved in the planning of this. So how exactly are we going to get the food that is that I need for this project? And then they're also going to um, contribute a reflection for this project. So keep in mind, this is not something you're doing without any input from your parents. And also keep in mind that if you're sending them to the store and you're not doing the work yourself, they will be noting that because I will be asking them that. So make sure that you're planning properly with your parents. All right, let's talk about our four food groups. So the first group that we are going to be talking about is your grain group. So grains include breads, tortillas, pita, pasta, cereal, rice, and quinoa. The only sources from this group that will count as a whole grain, as the only sources that will count for this group are whole grains, all right? And so if, you, if you're not sure if it's whole grain or if it'll count for your grain group, look at either the label 
if the label says that it's more or equal to 10% of your daily value of fiber or three grams, then that counts for your grain group. However, if it's less than three grams or less than 10% of your daily value, that will not count towards the grain group. All right. Now you might ask, how do I know for fruits and uh, how do I know for, for example, quinoa or other things, if certain things aren't going to be labeled, pretty much anything in the grain group is, but if you have a question, um, feel free to ask me. Okay. If you consume anything that is white, okay, that is, a, as we talked about, we have they re removed a huge amount of the nutrition in that food, including the fiber. It's a huge issue as far as health problems for Americans. And so as a result, it will not count. Okay. Grain is extremely important for, as a source of energy and B vitamins by removing key components of your grain, which we talked about. You are removing the health benefits of it. So things that do not count, cookies, soda, cake, donuts, and pastries, all of those go under one of the concern categories, so either high fat, high sugar, or high salt. Now, for the grain group, if you are eating whole grains, you may overeat. However, you must consume at least three servings of grain. So a serving of grain would be a piece of bread. Um, I liked, and I'm gonna talk about this in the fruit and vegetable section. If it is a heaping handful, as you can see in the diagram in those pictures with the broccoli and the cherries, if it's heaping, that is a serving, okay? And you might say, well, what if my hands are really big or really small? That correlates with your body size, so it works perfectly. So heaping hands, hand size, right? So if you have a huge bowl of pasta, it might be two servings. You need at, at least three. You can eat as many servings of grain as you want, all right? Next section, next food group is your fruits and vegetables. So for fruits and vegetables, you need four of each, okay? As a note, potatoes can only be listed once under the vegetable group, okay? And that's a gift that I'm giving you. I'm not talking about sweet potatoes. I'm talking about regular russet potatoes, okay? A serving from this group is approximately the size of one fruit, so a medium slash smaller size apple, pear, orange, or banana, or, for example, a small sweet potato or a full-size carrot. Now, if you have one of those ginormous apples, maybe that counts as one and a half servings, okay? This would be equal to the same as, as we said, a heaping handful, all right? We're striving in this class to consume more vegetables, specifically because it gives you a large amount of different vitamins, which we'll talk about in a second, and fiber, which is key. Remember, only about 3% of Americans get the recommended amount of fiber in a day, all right? For this project, any sort of bean or legume is gonna count as a vegetable, just as a note. So that should be able to help you to get your vegetable requirement if you're not a big veggie person. This seems like a lot as far as the requirement for fruit and vegetable. It is a really easy way to get your fruits and veggies if you know it's going to be an issue is to make smoothies. Okay, so that's just a note for you. All right, your dairy group. This group includes milk, yogurt, cheese, and cottage cheese. It does not include butter, margarine, cream, cheese, chocolate, milk, salad, dressing, whipped cream, ice cream, or sour cream. And that's because cream comes from the fat that's skimmed off the top of the milk. And since it's pure fat, we're not going to, there's basically no nutritional benefit to it. Okay, so we're not going to include those. This food group provides significant quantities of protein, calcium, which I've un, which I've bolded because this is the main source, one of the only sources of calcium that you can get, iron and vitamin B12. You need to strive to consume low fat or fat free sources. If you consume a full fat milk, that would count as one of your high fats. Okay? You do not need to consume any dairy for this project. However, you may not consume more than two servings of dairy. Okay. However, if you don't consume any dairy, you do need to know a good source of calcium, okay? So other foods that are rich in calcium include any sort of fortified foods, just look at the label, beans, almonds, and chia seeds. So if you're not going to be consuming milk, which is fine, I don't, you need to be concentrating on where you're going to get your calcium from. Finally, for your protein group, this food group includes beef, pork, fish, chicken, eggs, nuts, lentils, soy, and beans. It provides significant quantities of protein, which is important for proper growth and development, which we've talked about in this class already. Unfortunately, when the food comes from an animal source, it often, as we've talked about, has a lot of saturated fat. So if you are going to be choosing a meat, choose either fish, or fish, chicken, or you can also choose turkey, okay? Those are low in fat. Or if you're gonna be choosing beef, pork, or beef or pork, since those tend to be fattier cuts, you need to get a lean cut or a lean ground meat. If you don't, 
then you need and, and make sure that you record it as saying that you got a lean cut. If you don't, that needs to go under your problem area of high fat. All right, you may not count high fat foods such as bacon, sausage, or pepperoni, okay? They, the negative aspects of them as far as saturated fat outweigh the fact that they provide a little bit of protein, all right? Do not overeat from this group, okay? That being said, only one of your two required servings of protein may come from an animal source a day, okay? So you can only have one serving of meat a day. Now I challenge you to have no meat in the day, but I'm not going to force you to go vegetarian. If you go over one um, serving of meat and note that, then you will have points deducted. Okay? Use this, these five days as an opportunity to investigate other great sources of protein that are not meat-based, right? You have your legumes, you have soy, you have lentils, you have nut, you have so many different things that you can consume. So you need, if you note, for this group, for your protein group, you need at least two servings, okay? You can have more than that, but those extra servings have to be plant-based. They cannot be animal-based because you can only have one serving of animal meat in a day, okay? So just as a quick review, four requirements, key requirements. You need at least three servings of grain, at least four servings of fruit and vegetable, no more than two of your dairy and at least two of protein but remember only one can come from an animal so this is a lot of food the problem with this project is not lack of food it's that a lot of you guys do not consume as much food as you need in order to get all of the nutritional nutrition that you guys need that's recommended okay so look at this and plan maybe combine a bunch of these requirements into one meal okay and we'll be looking at that in class all right, so four major problems that Americans deal with. In the past, it used to be because we didn't consume enough vitamins, minerals, and protein. However, we've got plenty of that now. Now, the issue is that we are consuming too much fat, too much sugar, and too much salt. And so as a result, this causes major issues such as heart attack, cancer, diabetes, and stroke. Okay, so we want to make sure that we are limiting these problem areas when we have our, our healthy eating project. Okay, so the first one is you do not want too much fat. Now, fat is specifically saturated fat is present in a lot of our meat and dairy choices. Okay, and so we want to be avoiding that simply because as we talked about, too much saturated fat can lead to clogged arteries or atherosclerosis, right? The clogging of arteries because of buildup of plaque. Okay, and that can lead to heart attacks and strokes. And so it also, high amounts of fat can lead to cancer and obesity. So we want to be avoiding fat if possible, saturated fat. You also don't want to eat too much sugar. So sugar obviously is present in candy, soda, cookies, etc. This too much sugar can lead to tooth decay, type 2 diabetes, and obesity. So that's something else that we want to be avoiding. Next, too much salt. So salt can be found in chips salted meats, etc. Too much salt can result in high blood pressure, which we call hypertension, which again, remember as we talked about, can lead to atherosclerosis, heart disease, stroke, kidney disease, and edema, which is just a swelling due to excess fluids. Okay, so these are three of our major problems. Okay, and so you guys, I'm, for the project, I'm not telling you you cannot consume these. I'm telling you try and minimize your consumption of them. The last major issue is that um, we do not exercise enough. So the recommended amount of exercise is two and a half hours of moderate intensity exercise every week. Okay, And only about 20%, approximately 20% of Americans actually achieve that. And I understand that we're very busy, but for these five days, it's going to be required of you that you get two and a half hours a week, I'm gonna require that you guys get at least 30 minutes of exercise each day. I know that our project's only for five days, so that would give you your two and a half hours right there. However, humor me, 30 minutes, whatever it is. Walking outside, taking a brisk walk with, with a family member, with a dog, any sort of um, sports activity would obviously count. Play rehearsal, if you guys are dancing, 30 minutes of, of moderate intensity workout. Okay, each day. So the major nutrients that we're going to about to talk about, we I haven't actually introduced them formally. We will look at them later. However, the major nutrients 
such as vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium are very important for just anyone's growth development, your ability to fight infections, have strong bones, etc. Basically, your normal functioning. Okay. Now, while our bodies benefit the most from nutrients that are obtained naturally, as a result of that, while you can take a multivitamin during this project, your sources for these for these nutrients, you cannot say a multivitamin. It needs to come from natural foods, specifically because that is our ultimate goal, to be getting all of our nutrients from natural sources and not from a vitamin. So I'm not telling you not to take your vitamins, but you can't count that towards your specific nutrient. So these are the ones that we're going to specifically be focusing on. The first one, which I already mentioned when I talked about the dairy section, is calcium. Okay, So calcium is a nutrient that's vital for the development of strong bones, as we talked about. Osteoporosis is when occurs when calcium is leached from your bones, which leads to brittle bones. So while dairy clearly is the best source, you can also get it from tofu, spinach, collard greens, salmon, but then also you can have food that's fortified with calcium. And so for this specific nutrient, I'm okay with you consuming foods that are fortified with calcium. So if instead of drinking milk, you have soy milk, that's fine. Look at the label, make sure that it provides a significant amount of calcium for your diet. But otherwise, if you don't want to consume dairy, I'm okay with that. Iron, this is vital for, um, as we talked about, red blood cells are responsible for bringing oxygen to your brain. Okay? And so... Um, Iron is a key component in hemoglobin, which is responsible for binding to oxygen to get it to your brain. So if you are deficient in iron, then you do not get enough oxygen to your brain. Um, and so as a result, you can you get very tired. Um, so it's extremely important, obviously. So iron is present in a lot of different foods, a lot of different meats. Um, but you can also find it in soybeans, spinach, beans, and lentils as well. The next two include vitamin C. This is one that will not be an issue at all. So all of your citrus fruits have tons of vitamin C in them. Um, guavas, bell peppers, Brussels sprouts, kiwi, strawberries, and cantaloupe. By requiring you guys to eat fruits and vegetables, you're getting your vitamin C. That shouldn't be an issue. Vitamin A is one that's a little bit wonky. So vitamin A itself, you do not um, normally consume unless you're a fish eater um, or a liver eater. Um, also, you can get it from egg yolks. But vitamin A itself, we say it, it's it very important for vision. We'll talk about how important it is later on this semester. But the interesting thing is the majority of the vitamin A that our body gets is actually not from vitamin A. Um, we don't consume it as vitamin A. We consume it as carotenoids. So carotenoids are then converted into vitamin A in your body. And you find carotenoids in anything that is dark green or orange. So if you think about sweet potatoes, pumpkin squash, spinach, broccoli, all of those that are green, the darker, the better as far as green and orange are concerned in your vegetables. Okay? So you don't have to directly eat vitamin A in the project. You can have carotenoids, which your body will then convert to vitamin A, which is perfectly fine. So those are four major nutrients. So just to go over calcium, iron, vitamin C, and vitamin A that I want you to be focusing on in addition to the four major food groups. So I'm gonna go through a sample diet. So what you would do is you would actually throughout your day, so let's say for example, this is day one, you would actually record everything you eat. So this is everything that Dana had for breakfast, everything Dana had for lunch, for dinner, and for snacks, okay? So if, as you will notice, not the best diet, but we're gonna actually go through and identify the four major groups, and then also look and try and see sources for her major nutrients. So vitamin C, vitamin A, calcium, and iron. And then also identify her problem areas and then see if she should make any sort of changes. All right, so if we start off, the first food she had was frosted flakes with non-fat milk. And so the question I ask is, okay, should frosted flakes be counted as a grain group? I don't know. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go online. I'm gonna go onto Google and I'm gonna look up frosted flakes. And under Frosted Flakes, I'm going to look up Frosted Flakes and Nutrition Label. So if you look at the Nutrition Label here, it says it only has 0.9 grams of dietary fiber, which is 4% of what you need. Remember, 3 grams would be the 10%. So this does not count as a grain group because it does not make, um, make the requirement of having the 10%. Okay, so I'm not going to highlight Frosted Flakes. Okay, the next part is the non-fat milk. Okay, awesome. So that would count as dairy. So if you notice, dairy here is in red. So I'm going to highlight it and put it in red. Okay, there's my dairy. Fantastic. Whole grain toast. Whole grain. Um, 
counts as a grain group. The only piece of information that I would change here is, is how many pieces did you have? Did you have just one piece? Because when I'm reading this as a grader, I'm going to assume you only had one, um, one piece. If you had two pieces, add that. So, right, like times two, for example, for me to know that. But I'm going to assume that this is just one piece, so I'm going to just highlight it yellow, okay? With butter and jelly, butter and jelly provide nothing at all, so not very helpful. Orange juice. Orange juice, it, it's going to be depending on how you guys want to address this um, and how strict you want to be and how hard you want to be on yourself. So for me, orange juice doesn't count as anything other than a good source of vitamin C, right? And we can get vitamin C from almost, almost anything that we consume. So I'm going to ignore the orange juice. Bean and cheese burrito. All right, so beans count as a vegetable. So I'm going to make that green. Cheese counts as my dairy. Okay, burrito. This is not very helpful in describing what, so that's all I assume that it provides. What if it had veg, other vegetables in it though, right? What if it had other stuff in it? Is this, is the um, tortilla, is it whole grain? I don't know, but by only writing this, for Dana, I wouldn't give her a grain group, right? I wouldn't give her, that wouldn't be a serving of grain. If she wrote on a whole grain uh, tortilla, fantastic. So the more details you provide, the more, I, the more I can give you. All right, brown rice, she should highlight as yellow because it comes from the green group. Brownie does not count for anything. 7-Up does not count for anything. We'll look at the, high, the issue section in a second. Fried chicken, all right. Fried chicken is a protein. It does count as a protein, okay? Asparagus counts as a vegetable, so I will highlight that as green, okay? Pepsi, nothing. Ice cream, nothing. Does not count as a dairy. It's mostly fat. Starburst is just a sugar. It doesn't count. Coke doesn't count. Raisin Bran. I do not know if Raisin Bran would count as a grain group. So let's go back. Let's go online. You're going to do a lot of online searching right now. Raisin Bran. Nutrition label. There we go. All right. Let's look at the nutrition label for Raisin Bran. Don't want to get muffins. All right. Here, uh, two grams of dietary fiber, only 8%. That does not count. So that does not count for anything. The non-fat milk counts as, not, sorry, not your protein, counts as your dairy group. Okay. And then a chocolate, uh, chocolate cupcake. All right. So if you look at this so far, remember for your grain group, you're required to consume at least three um, servings of grain at least four of fruit, four of vegetable, um, a maximum of two of dairy, and then at least two of your protein. So the way that I like to write this, you shouldn't have less than or equal to two, and then greater than or equal to two. So I'm, I'm not going to try and do that on the computer. Um, but let's actually count this. So I'm assuming this is only one serving. If it's more than one serving, then make a note of that when you're typing this out. One serving here, two servings here, that's it. So two right there. Fruit, if you look at it, she's got nothing. Okay. Vegetables, only two. Okay. Dairy, one, two, three. And then for the protein, only, oh, uh, ooh, this is hard. Um, so for pro, uh, the cool thing for eating beans, what I forgot to do, I'm going to highlight the beans as green and pink because it counts as a vegetable, but it also is a great source of protein. So she's got two sources of protein there, so she's good there. All right, so let's move on, and then I'll explain how I would grade this as she goes through. All right, so great source of vitamin C. I'm going to say the orange juice. The orange juice is fine, okay? Um, vitamin A, I don't see anything orange, and I don't see any super dark, leafy vegetable. Um, asparagus is not a great source of vitamin A, but if you want to check it, let's see. I'm going to go online. Aspar is asparagus a good source of vitamin A? Let's see. Don't need a picture. Along with other leafy greens, asparagus is a good source of vitamin K. Let's see. Okay, it talks about folate, copper, vitamin B1, selenium, B, vitamin E, not a great source. Nope. Uh, let's say carotenoids. Because remember, carotenoids. Remember, uh, vegetables actually don't provide vitamin A. They provide carotenoids, which then become vitamin A. 
All right. Uh, let's see carotenoids. Okay. So it's about 10, how's about this, this for asparagus? Yeah, about 10% of what's required. So not even, it's not a great source unless you're going to have um, like five servings of, so there really was no great source of vitamin A. Uh, for calcium, no issue at all, right? Milk, lots of milk. All right. Um, iron um, would be, beans are fine, right? Beans are a good source of, um, of iron. Um, if you ever are wondering, you can look it up, okay? All right, let's get to the problem area. So high fat, if we look at this, I'm reading through her breakfast, no issue. Lunch would be a brownie. Okay, uh, fried chicken for dinner would be high fat. Um, ice cream would be high fat. And a chocolate cupcake. Okay, um, high salt. Uh, if we read through this, I mean, honestly, it depends if we're, I'd probably say the, the fried chicken. Okay. She doesn't really have high salt as an issue. High sugar is an issue. Frosted flakes are high sugar. Okay. Here's where your, um, your two cents comes in and I'm going to trust you guys. Butter and jelly. Is she taking an entire, um, an entire stick of butter and putting it on with an entire jar of jelly or is she just putting a tiny bit? If it's just a tiny bit, you don't need to count the jelly as high sugar. If she's using a lot, then add it as high sugar, okay? Orange juice. So orange juice, remember, does not have the fiber, which is key in keeping your blood sugar from spiking, okay? I personally would put OJ as a high sugar. Um, that That's what I would do. If you don't put it, I'm not going to be docking you for drinking juices. I want... But if you drink like three different glasses of juice in a day, um, you should put at least one or two of those as a high sugar. Um, other things that are high sugar would include your brownie. Her, as you guys notice, she has a terrible diet. Seven up. Um, what else? Her ice cream. Her, I mean, I'm just kidding. Her Coke. Her Starburst and her chocolate cupcake. Okay, so here's how I would grade this. Um, all right, so I look here. This is how I, I go through and I grade. These do not match up. There's a min minus one point here because she was lacking one uh, serving of grain group. So minus one. This would be minus four, minus two, minus one for going over because remember for the dairy group, you're not allowed to, and then nothing there. Here, because she doesn't have a good source of vitamin A, that'd be a point docked there, okay? Then here, remember, you're only allowed to have two from each of the problem areas, so that'd be minus two there, and then minus one, one, two, three, four, five, six there, okay? So obviously, this isn't gonna be like an 80-point assignment. I'm gonna take it and then pare it down to make it more reasonable as far as points are concerned, but for that, each time you go over, it does count, I end up docking a point, um, won't end up being exactly a point, but it, I do take off for everything that you go over or that you're under that you don't meet the requirements for. So let's talk about changes, okay? What changes should be made? All right, so the most obvious, she has no fruit. So how about we eliminate the frosted flakes, which provide not enough fiber to be considered a grain group. Um, you can have the grain, the whole grain toast. How about instead of butter and jelly, have avocado toast? There's one of your fruits, or you can count avocado as a vegetable if you'd like to, if you're desperate. I'm fine with that. Okay, instead of orange juice, how about you make a smoothie, a fruit smoothie? There are two or three at least servings of fruit in a fruit smoothie, okay? Remember, serving is a heaping handful of fruit or vegetable, okay? So that eliminates a bunch of the, the negatives and then adds um, some fruit and slash vegetable options there. Um, bean and cheese burrito. I'm, I'm fine with that. A burrito bowl probably would be better. She does have brown rice, which is fantastic. Instead of the brownie and the 7-Up, let's add a fruit, right? Or let's add two fruits. And maybe let's add some vegetables to her lunch. Because if you notice, other than beans, she doesn't have any vegetables there. Okay. Here, dinner instead of fried chicken, why don't you do roasted chicken instead? Or maybe fry it with avocado oil, as we noted. Remember, the smoke point of avocado oil is super high. Okay. 
that the avocado oil would not count as a vegetable, um, but it does make it a little bit more healthy. Okay, asparagus, fantastic. Instead of the Pepsi and the ice cream, let's make a dessert based on fruits. Okay, um, and instead of Pepsi, water is perfectly fine. Um, snacks, here's where she's, she's having issues. Her snacks are way too sugar and fat laden. Instead, having more fruit, um, you can do whole grains, um, that's perfectly fine, but making sure that you are not lacking in these, right? You should be going over, not under, all right? And the only other thing that's lacking is vitamin A. So what she could do actually for a snack is she could have sweet potato fries, like make herself sweet potato fries. Don't go out and buy them because those are super um, just drenched in oil, but you can actually bake sweet potato fries. Um, That'd be a great snack, and she'd get her carotenoids in there, so she'd get she wouldn't lose a point for not having a good source of vitamin A. All right, does Dana meet the recommended amount of exercise in the day? All right, so if you notice, it says Dana's mom drove her to school and she stayed for play practice, in which she is in multiple dance numbers until 7 p.m. If you're in multiple dance numbers, you're going to get 30 minutes of moderate to intense um, exercise in a day. So you're going to be the judge of that. You need to decide: did I did I truly do 30 minutes in the day? And report. Honestly, um, so this is one day. You're going to be doing this five times. Now, there are a couple of rules as you start to plan. You're going to do a couple of these practice and then you're going to plan your own. A couple of rules. First rule, you cannot have the exact same thing for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day for five days. It's not sustainable. The purpose of this is to teach you guys how to plan in advance and figure out what you like and maybe branch out a little bit. That being said, if you like having the same thing for breakfast every morning, I have a bagel and a latte every morning. I'm fine with that. Mix up the lunch and dinner. What you guys might notice is if you make plenty of dinner one night, the next day for lunch, that can be your lunch. So I'm fine with that, with a couple of things repeating, but you cannot have the exact same thing every single day. All right? And that's it. So I'm going to have you go on to Kayla and to other people to be able to identify what works for them, some changes we can make. We'll have a class discussion. And then at the end of class, you're going to start planning for yourself, for your own healthy eating project.